When we talk about linear equations, slope is a very important part of a linear equation. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and try this front this front page. Don't go past the Jackie example, but um, pause the video now and try this section on your own. So I wrote that you would go up three, and I also put north because that's what it said in the question, and I right or east four. Down at the Jackie example, I said she won't get lost because she did the correct thing just in the reverse order. So if you have something similar to that, you can keep what you wrote. If you have something that's totally wrong or totally different than mine, then it's either wrong or ask me when you see me tomorrow in class. Um, but let's talk more specifically about what slope is. In the math world, whenever we determine how to get from one point to another, we are calculating what's called the slope. The easiest way to calculate slope is to look at a graph. You count how many points you move up, then you count how many points you are up or down, then you count how many points you move left or right. It must always be written as a fraction, and the numerator is the up-down value, and the denominator is the left-right value. So those are the major important pieces about slope. The, d the definition, so to speak, of slope is that it describes the steepness of a line. So an example that many of you will know, those of you that went on survival will know what I'm talking about. When you first got off the bus that first day and, we, and you walked up that hill, Alexander Hill Road or whatever it was called, to get to base camp, that felt pretty steep. But then when you climbed the notch that was much steeper. So the slope of the notch is significantly larger than the slope of that Alexander Hill that you walked up to get to base camp. So that's an idea of what slope really describes. Slope is equal to rise over run. It's a fraction. And we use the letter M to represent slope. There is an official formula for slope. It looks a little something like this. Y with a little one next to it. I'm sorry, y2 minus y with a little 1 next to it over x with a little 2 next to it minus x with a little 1 next to it. And that's the formula for slope. Where that comes from is over here in the picture. So the way that we find the rise is we subtract the y values or we do the vertical change. And the way that we do the run is we subtract the x values and we get the horizontal change. So these two pieces are going into the slope formula and the y values are always on the top and the x values are always on the bottom. If you look at these two pictures, you can see what slope, um, how slope differs versus positive and negative. So if you have a positive line, it's going up from left to right. And if you have a negative line, it's going down. Here's how I like to think about it. I like to picture myself skiing on the line. So I put myself, see there my skis, and I got my hat, and I gotta put a scarf on because it's cold because I'm skiing. So there's me skiing on the line. If I'm skiing up the line, which really would be weird, but anyway, if I'm skiing up the line, then that's a positive slope. If I draw myself on this line, skiing, and my scarf. If I draw myself skiing this line, I would end up going down the line. And so that would be a negative slope. A lot of times you can look at a line and you can know, you may not know what the number that represents the slope is, but you at least know whether it's a positive answer or a negative answer. So if you look at letter A, that line is going up from left to right. It looks like this positive line. So when we describe the slope of the line, that's positive. Now I have to figure out what it actually is. So they've given me the rise, which is 5, and they've given me the run, which is 6. Now you never turn slope into a decimal. You always leave it as a fraction. No mixed numbers, no decimals. Always a fraction. Whether it's improper, that's okay. And so 5 over 6 is my slope. Letter B that one's going down from left to right, so you can see that it's a negative line. And they've given me the rise is negative 3. And the run is 2. Do not turn that into one negative 1 and a half. Leave it as a fraction. 
Let's do two more. We have did horizontal and vertical line graphing earlier. Now let's find its slope. So it doesn't matter which point you start with. So I'll just start here and I'll finish here. In order to get from this point to this point, my rise, you always do the rise first, my rise is zero. So I'll just put a little zero. I haven't risen at all. My run going horizontal is seven. So the slope is zero over seven. Now you can leave it zero over seven, but you can still write it as zero. zero even though zero over seven is a fraction, it, you can write it as zero. So the slope here is zero. Letter B. I'll start at the top and finish on the bottom. My rise is actually negative, right? Rise is always the vertical number. So you do vertical first, and my vertical changes negative 4. And once I've done the rise, I'm at the point, so I don't need to do any horizontal movement. So I'll just write a 0 next to the horizontal movement. And so the slope is rise over run. Now, some of you may think that this is 0, and you are wrong. When the zero's on the bottom, it's actually undefined. If you don't believe me that it's not zero, grab your calculator and type in negative four divided by zero. You will get an error message on your calculator because you cannot divide something by zero. So you can write undefined and some people write no slope because there's no answer. Either one of these is fine. You do not have to write both. You can pick whichever one you like. Um, but this is an undefined slope. Horizontal lines all have a zero slope, and vertical lines all have a no, no slope or undefined slope. There's something different in example three. You have a table of points, and what they're asking us to figure out is how you can find the slope by using the table. So, you want to use the slope formula if you have points listed like you do here in this table. If you want to, you could graph the points and count the boxes like we've been doing, but let's practice with the slope formula. So remember the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then you pick any two points that you want. So I will pick the first two. It doesn't matter. You can pick any two you want, any two that are the friendliest for you. And these are the x values and these are the y values. It doesn't matter which one you call x1 and which one you call x2. You just have to stay consistent. So I'll call this one x1 and this will be x2 and this will be y1 and this will be y2. You have to be consistent with the letters and the numbers. So if this is x2, then this has to be y2. Since this is x1, this is y1. Again, it doesn't matter which one you label, you just have to be consistent. Now we plug in. y2 is 6, y1 is 8, x2 is 4, x1 is 1. Simplify that, and that's the slope, negative 2 thirds. If you want to plot the points as a double check, plot the points, count the boxes, and hopefully you'll get negative two-thirds. Down below is a picture of all the different types of slopes that we've learned. This is what positive slope looks like. This is what a negative slope looks like. Zero is always horizontal, and vertical is always undefined. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you come to class.